Okay, we are recording. Hi, everybody. This is David P. France, and I'm coming to you from Basel, Switzerland. Before we start the video or the interview, uh, we would like you to like the videos that you're watching, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and also share the video. Feel free to comment on the videos. You can do it in a number of ways. You can write on the video. You can write to me. Uh, let us know what you're up to and, and what you think of what we're putting out. This is David P. France TV. And uh, we are a platform for creators and creative people. So that includes artists, inventors, thought leaders, small business owners, and entrepreneurs. And uh, today I have the pleasure of speaking with someone who I met uh, a couple of years ago. It's Veronica Zuck. Yeah. Um, and Veronica, I met Veronica through a program. And I'm going to explain what that program, I tell you what the name of the program is and explain, and then she's going to go into it, uh, into more detail. It's called the International University Global Theater Experience, also known as I-U-G-T-E. And um, I discovered the program through an email that you somehow sent to me and it was very interesting. And I thought, hmm, and I put a little, um, I clip on it or something, I, I, I tagged it. And then I eventually, I, I, I started one of the programs now, as we, we talked earlier that the, the organization was based out of Latvia but has um, put on different programming and conferences in Italy and in Austria and, and Germany. So welcome, tell us, tell us more about the program. Tell us about who you are. Hello, hello everybody. Hello David and thank you for having me here. It's a big pleasure for me to be here with you. Uh, so yes, my name is Veronika Zuk, as David have mentioned. Uh, originally, I'm from Ukraine, but currently residing in Hungary, here in Europe. So, and I'm, yes, pro program and project coordinator at IUGT, running several projects, uh, especially the one that is called International Conference Performing Arts Between Tradition and Contemporaneity. So it's a big event for us and it's my pleasure that I grew up to the level of coordinating this amazing conference. And uh, IAGT is basically a nonprofit organization that uh, organizes different international educational programs for um, theater makers, uh, actors, dancers, circus performers, choreographers, and different multidisciplinary uh, artists uh, who are keen, more keen and interesting, uh, are interested in learning more about physical theater and uh, directing, uh, movement directing, teaching and coaching actors and performers. Uh, with our teacher, Sergei Ostrenko, who is artistic director and uh, leader of department of the theater, Russian theater department at IGT, Sergei Ostrenko. Mm -hmm. um, he, is, he was the one who, uh, with whom David has joined the workshop, the program. Yeah. That's right. Um, yes, and... Uh, at our programs, we explore the bridge between tradition and contemporaneity. So basically, uh, the method of uh, Sergey is to explore and connect, to unify the elements from uh, traditional Russian theater school, which is Stanislavski, Mir Hold, and um, Michael Chalhav. They approaches with uh, contemporary European elements and the theater elements uh, um, of various, not only European, but also Asian theater inspires a lot um, Ostrenko's um, Ostrenko brothers. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. are they're having a vast experience in this field and they are sharing it with their students, which is around 3000 students all around the world from Alaska to Australia, from Russia to South Africa. So, really. so, let, me, so let me ask you a question. Um, how many programs do you normally have per year? And how many, how many uh, students in each 
you know, program? Because I know that I was in one and I think it was about, I think we were about 25 maybe, as, as I remember. Uh, yeah, usually, usually uh, if we are speaking about in-class programs like you were in, uh, it was a lab, mm -hmm. a five day workshop. Uh, it's about, yeah, 15, from 15 to 25, even 30 people per one workshop. Uh, and the workshops, as you know, uh, they are very intensive. Uh, usually we make at least five days workshop where we are working from morning, from 7 a.m. until 9 p.m. Very uh, intensive and very fruitful. That's why I think uh, many students come back and return to us to, because in such an intensive environment, you learn much more in a shorter amount of time. Because now the contemporary world is very fast, very expensive. Time is money <laughs> and everybody. <laughs> so we want more in less time. That's why sure. our schedules are like that. And it's around 40 hours of training, uh, of actual training at five days workshop. That's pretty important. Yeah. Well, I, 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 as I remember, what was, what stands out to me, there were, you know, there are a lot of things in the program. Um, we were in a castle in Austria. And I guess for people that don't, kind of know the layout it's as if the castle was sort of like a it's a mid not even it's a small castle right but then there's like farmland around it and a small development around it which made it very interesting uh and we were there you know from early morning all the way till evening and we slept there uh you know for what five days we were there also i remember the exercises that we did in the morning, in the early morning, right? So just for example, I'm not gonna give everything away, but let's say we closed our eyes and we put the hand on someone else and they, they guided us, right? So can you explain to people, for example, what that type of, of exercise is supposed to do for an artist and then expand on that? Uh, yeah, of course. This exercise has been developed by Sergei pretty long time ago. I guess uh, even when he just started um, teaching in Latvia around 30 years ago, maybe 20. He has a long history of teaching. Uh -huh, and sure. this exercise was developed by him and uh, Basically, it is, uh, there is a particular structure of the training process at Sergio Stongo's classes. Um, not only we start with that exercises, but also we are preparing ourselves, uh, if you remember, with the breathing exercises first, uh, when, we are, when we were outside. Outside, sure. So, and we did uh, breathing exercises, which is just calming down and um, uh, returning to our bodies after sleep. And uh, after that, we have breakfast. And uh, yes, uh, the next class starts with the with this kind of improvisation. When you walk, walk with your partner, with your eyes closed. So the main, uh, one of the main, uh, uh, purposes of this exercise is to uh, teach each partner to feel each other, to feel responsibility for each other, and um, to unfold the creativity, to build the trust. This uh, exercise is very useful for ensemble building. And um, for example, through the touch, uh, we can um, we can join. We can um, connect get to, get to know each other yeah. much more faster 
than through chatting or uh, other stuff. The, the physical contact makes it very easy to make this bridge between each individual. Yeah. And then each individual feels responsibility um, for each partner because we always change the partners uh, of the, at this exercise. One leader guides, then another leader guides, then we change partners. One is leader, one is follower, et cetera, et cetera. And in a short amount of time, you, you've made a connection to each individual person and you have something in common. And it makes it easier for further creative development of the class. Yeah, yeah, further... it, was, it was amazing. It was, it really was. I, 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 I was there with my eyes open. I don't know if you knew that. I just was sort of like, wow, because I'm a creative person, but I had never had that sort of immersion with other people who were just as creative, right? So I'm used to being the only person that's in that space because of my schooling. I didn't go to an acting school. I didn't go to a dance school. But when I was with this, with you guys, it was like, wow, that person is really, uh, you know, there were, there were different exercises that brought certain things out in different people. So you were able to see that almost, um, almost like a mirror, like, you know, it, it, it made you want to to, to to become better or you always knew you could do it, but you didn't know someone else could do it. And just for example, there was another exercise where we had to come up with a, an acting, so, some sort of acting. We had a, like the only the, the evening to put it together. And there were, I think maybe three or four, five people in a group. And then we had to present, you know, this was, I think uh, an amazing exercise. Most people don't, know this kind of thing they don't most people are not living in this space you know it's very very special uh yeah and uh, this is why i guess people are coming to our programs they need the tools how to make the process work how to make process uh, workable so it guides you to the results to the actual performance yeah. But it is also joyful process, creative process, uh, unharmful for artists. And you're building a safe space uh, for actors to create in. And uh, these uh, exercises, each exercise what we use in a chain of exercise, it uh, guides students to actual performance. Mm -hmm. Each yeah. exercise, if it's only a separate exercise, then yeah, it's exercise only for exercise. But if you put it in a in a certain sequence, then you see a development. Aha, uh -huh, this exercise leads to next level and next level. And if you remember one of the Sergei's um, things is to make layers of exercise you start simply with your eyes open and uh, without music without nothing and then as another level you close your eyes and another level they add music another level another kind of music for example more rhythmical music right. and uh, but it is always a gradual process, always from a simple to compound to more complex. Uh, but it's always um, uh, needed for a teacher or for director to fill their actors, to fill their students, and uh, to understand, is it a right time to give this exercise or is it a right time for next level? And uh, this is what we actually um, are doing at our programs. And also we are running now a long-term program for theater directors and um, movement directors, which teaches these exact skills, what, what directors should need, uh, what tools directors have to have mm -hmm. to work with doctors, how to communicate with them and um, a lot of interesting things that's 
a pretty amazing uh, program. Uh, if I would be able to go back in time and decide what uh, profession I would like to choose, I would like to uh, choose a theater directing because uh, it's a, such an interesting profession um, where you are is responsible. You are responsible for all creative process right. from working with actors, working with the play, working with the text, uh, working with the technicians, developing visual concept uh, and sound design of the performance, and uh, each step how to make it, how to be, realize it, how to release this um, your idea. This is pretty uh, yeah, amazing. It's, it's important. It's it's super important. And let me tell you something else that I got out of it. I think it's it's one of those things that continues to ripple. You know, when you think about it, um, I just like the fact that let's say in the morning we did these exercises um, with Sergey's uh, brother, um, and it was like it was something that I had not been used to. Right. I mean, I'm a movement person. But I was not uh, used to doing this out in the morning, early in the morning and moving and all moving together and so on. Um, explain a little bit more about what this, this, you touched on it earlier, but explain this, this particular exercise that we, we had to be up or like think seven in the morning, right? Uh, yeah, basically it's um, a Tai Chi for performers. Uh, Sergei calls it like that. Uh, Tai Chi for performers. And this particular breathing exercises uh, are just uh, a very good start of the day. They fill you up with the right energy and uh, they just, you, you kind of uh, feel yourself like a, like a person again. You slept, you are tired, you don't uh -huh. want to go there so early in the morning it's so boring but you have to and you get up and you go there and you do this uh breathing exercises with uh, sergey and with other group of people and you feel like yeah that's good, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. and uh, because uh, it great it starts very gradually or always even in this exercise you start very simple and then your body, like like a flower, blossoms, mm -hmm. and you start to um, eliminate uh, fluids of positive energy. And um, I think that's a good start of the day. Yeah, um, yeah, Sergei, yeah. Sergei's been doing these for, if I'm not wrong, like over thirty or forty oh, know, years. He's doing yeah. it every day. And um, he found it very useful for himself for a daily practice because he's also a mover. And uh, yoga, for example, he also uh, compares yoga to these exercises. Mm -hmm. Yoga is good for strength and for flexibility, but, uh, at, but dancers already have it. They are already strong and flexible people usually. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and, um, but these uh, Tai Chi breathing exercises, they are very soft and they are uh, more like a movement, movement based, not, not, a, not static. Mm -hmm. So, and with this softness, with this uh, connection of the movement to your breathing, and uh, also as a next level, for, as a next level, it's connection of your mind, to the movement and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, mm -hmm. yep. as a uh, next level, it's a work with the energy flow. Yeah, yep. yep. that's exactly what it is. It's, it's, it's really how to get in touch with yourself and then being able to move energy in, a, in very subtle ways, right? So what I found is that I was sort of going within, I was, you know, the exercises force you to go within, right? So by the time that I think the third, third day in, I mean, you could feel the effect of doing these exercises in a big way. I think the first day, I think we were all tired afterwards, right? Um, 
but it, it, it really is. And I think for people who, who are not familiar with this sort of, because I think this is, a, this is a world that is not mainstream at all. When I say mainstream, that may not be the right word. It's just so specific. It's even for people in theater, I think they don't necessarily um, know what this is about. It really is, how, how can I say it? It's a combination of various movement exercises, both individual and group to get you to elevate your ability to move in the performance space. Yeah. That's Does that make right. sense? That absolutely makes sense. And uh, it is such a good uh, point that you mentioned to move in the space and to feel one's body in the space. But sometimes actors, you know, uh, actors or dancers, they are just moving for movement without, without any meaning in it, and without, um, it's like empty movement, you, you say, yeah? Yes. Uh, empty movement on stage without communicating with the space. But it's always, you, if you are alone on the stage, you are not alone on the stage. You have floor is your partner, space is your partner, um, time is your partner, yes. and you're in, always in this interaction with all of these elements that around you. It's amazing. Uh, it, it really is amazing. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make one more point, and then I'm going to ask about you personally, which is even, let's say, what I felt after the, um, the, the, the uh, conference was that people in a corporation, people that are in front of large uh, groups of people like CEOs, high level managers, I think, now I, I don't know if they would necessarily wanna do everything that we did, right? But I believe that part of what they're not seeing is the point that you just made. So let's say there is a video conference where they're giving a message to, you know, a thousand employees, but they're on the camera they still should have some knowledge about how to move into the camera space, right? How to be directed, um, how to, you know, position themselves or present information in such a way that is, is credible. And I think that once these people that get to, you know, they, they, go, they get to very high levels, what brought them to the level and what is gonna keep them at the level are two different things. And then th this is where I believe your, your training, the training that you guys provide can be helpful in this scenario. So I at least wanted to you know, say this. I don't know if this is something that you guys do already or, or not. Uh, training for corporate organizations, you mean? Yeah. yeah, or people that are not specifically dance or actors. Yeah, I think uh, there's there's an opportunity there that I can see because I I can tell you that when people are making speeches, they're not looking at the floor as their partner. <laughs> they're not looking at the space. You know what I mean? They're not. They're just just saying, reading on the paper. You know, and um, you know, what are your thoughts on this? Yes, definitely. Um... Even if you are speaking to the audience, you you have to have training. If uh, even if this audience is your friends or your employees, and they don't have a chance to go stand up and go out, uh, but you still have to respect their time and their presence, and uh, to have at least a little bit of training before you go on stage and speak to them. That's most definitely, uh, and. Uh, I, I think, of course, the training that give um, IUGT would be useful for uh, corporates, uh, but mainly Sergey and uh, his brother Gennady, they are working with professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I can think, yes, this training would be useful for corporates. Um, even basic acting uh, training would be good 
to any kind of person because acting uh, not necessarily uh, can be for stage. Uh, there are so many things in theater and in acting that are so useful for ordinary life. Um, how to speak, how to communicate, how to look at the camera, how to, um, what kind of energy to um, produce, to, to give from oneself to another. For example, I like how Sergei uh, was training me when I was have to have my first conference. Mm -hmm. um, he said, Veronica, imagine that these people who are sitting there, they are not professors and uh, um, artistic directors of their dance and theater companies. They are children. Mm -hmm. Imagine they are children and you are explaining what you're uh, you're you're telling your text as to the children yeah and uh, try to uh produce this text with this energy and i was like trying and trying and and uh, you can really f feel the difference sure. when you are like only reading from a paper and very uh -huh. stupid stuff and like the, 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 that's not the case. Like, think think of the people like, ah, did you understand? Do you understand what I mean? Come on, isn't it interesting? And uh, you have to always question, huh, have you understood me? Was I clear? Yeah. Was it interesting for you? Did you get what I mean? And stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing. It's a it's it's a totally different, totally different approach. Totally different approach. And has influenced me in a in a different way. Let's say when I'm working and you know with my day job or my day jobs, I have it a totally different approach than when I was a younger person. And part of the, what I learned from that program was that this interaction or this exchange is really, really, really important. It really is like, and so I bring a, a bit of that to my own everyday life. Let me ask you about your everyday life. What, how did you get involved with the program? I mean, you've been with the, the program for a while. Like, how did, how did this happen? It was very quickly after I think university or something. I remember you telling us the story. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, so it started really interestingly uh, when I was still a student at my bachelor's uh, studies. I was uh, involved in the programs as a volunteer uh, at, for the programs of IGT. I was volunteering, and uh, there were several uh, programs. It was the first one was a three day workshop, I guess, or something like that. It was like a very basic introduction to um, contact improvisation and uh, uh, physical theater. Uh, and then I was uh, involved in a performance production project in a theater with Sergei and Gennady Ostronka. They were, uh, they were leaders of a group of artists uh, from Italy, from Finland, from Ireland and Canada, I guess, uh, maybe somebody else, maybe I forgot, who were working on a performance uh, which was based on Romeo and Juliet. A love, uh, it was called Love and Death in Verona. And uh, this project took place in Russia mm -hmm. in 2015, I guess. It was really interesting project. Uh, firstly, we did, uh, uh, they did, <laughs> because I was just an uh, assistant volunteer, maybe you say like a runner, who's just technical person. Yeah. Uh, there was a three-week program, then a six-week program. No, firstly, there was a one-week program. It was like a lab, also introduction with a... Uh, uh, in a Russian theater, there is a constant group of uh, actors. So it was like an introduction to the process, to the uh, 
um, of strength of acid, of repressing, etc. Mm -hmm. And so then it was a three-week program where they already have touched the, um, the text. Uh, there was a lot of improvisation and uh, Russian actors are really lazy and to unfold their creativity, you have to have a, a strength of thousand mountains to move their lazy asses. <laughs> <laughs> they are really lazy. And, um, and uh, the whole creative process of Ostrenko depends on the impulses from, from artists, from actors, from technical staff. So if you, it, it, like it's a communication. I have an idea. Do you have an idea? Yeah, let's make our ideas work together and produce a new idea. That's right. But in lot of theater, not always like that. And you know this uh, uh, stereotype that Russian directors are dictators. Mm -hmm. That's pretty true because you. Uh, otherwise, we're not able to do anything until the result, until a, a premiere night in there, because they're just they're just not doing anything. Mm -hmm. They are, I don't know, maybe lazy. That's why. Uh, so uh, the, this three week program was a need to to push actors to creativity to uh, produce ideas, to make uh, some etudes, uh, small, small performances, uh, small improvisations, like what is basic for us here in Europe, you have to spend some time to uh, wake it up in Russian actors. I understand. Uh, and then uh, these three weeks were, and these three weeks is also like an audition process, so it is not uh, told to actors that like, if you are good in these three weeks, then you will be in a performance. It's not to tell, uh, it's not told like that, but uh -huh. it is, but we don't want to make a pressure. Uh, in the cross. Uh, Sergey and Gennady, they are not crossing actors. There are no judgments uh, on our programs. Um, it's yeah. pretty, pretty safe environment to be in, to create, et cetera, et cetera. So we don't want any pressure there. In this three week program, was this, this is the program that you were involved in and you became uh, a, more of a permanent fixture of the program, right? Was uh, it this program or how did they, they brought you in as an, you were assisting a runner and then all of a sudden, you know, you, you were there longer. Yeah. <laughs> So well, this was still uh, while I was a student of my uh -huh. bachelor, and uh, I went to these programs uh, um, as my practice, um, I don't know, internship, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, um, I was also like a translator there, involved like a translator from Russian to English, right. and, uh, and like an assistant, still like an assistant, and then a six week program. And uh, I haven't become yet uh, like a, a valuable figure <laughs> in the team uh, at that point, uh, uh -huh. but I was really interested in uh, this world, in uh, staying uh, in this creative world, because before that I was mainly interested in entrepreneurship, in management, in business administration and stuff like that, but always my heart belonged to arts, but I didn't know how to involve myself in this field, in the art field. And uh, this opportunity with uh, uh, Stranko Brothers and the, with LGT, I really felt like this is what I would like to do. And I stuck to them <laughs> so that uh, I wanted to become like a, like a valuable uh, yeah. stuff person. Yeah. And uh, after that, I finished my bachelor's and uh, I finished my master's degree in Berlin. 
And from uh, this point, when I finished my master's in Berlin, uh, I started to uh, um, work on projects uh, from idea to the post production. Yeah, yeah. So the first program was in Berlin, and this line of projects was uh, suggested by me um, because Berlin is the city that is very creative. Uh, all uh, arts are represented there from a traditional classical to avant-garde and uh, super modern neoclassics. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of dance uh, companies, a lot of experimental theaters, a lot of theaters even on the Berlinale, famous film festival. Sure. Like, sure. This, this city is just, is just created for people well, like we are. Well, well, I, I, I will say this, that um, going through the program helped to fortify what I already knew about myself, but you guys were doing it in a much bigger way. So I'm a big believer in interdisciplinary work, but you, were, you guys had such, you were doing it on such a high level that it was almost like, I don't have to do anything. All I just have to do is be through it or go through it, you know? And I enjoyed, um, it was like, okay, what are we gonna do next? Or what are we gonna do next? And um, what I hope, and I'll, I'll, I'll say this, and I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna keep you any longer, but I hope when all of this COVID, um, these situations die down, that we can get back to that. And I will have had, I've, I will have figured out a way <laughs> To, to to be with you guys again because I think it I think it's it's what is missing in the arts community in general. So I don't think this is happening what you guys are doing. I don't think it's happening in the United States. This is my gut. I don't think it's happening this kind of training. And it's one thing to have a dancer, you know it's it's big it's a big thing for me to say this. But it, it was the intention, the intention and the experience that um, Sergey brought to the table, right? You could feel it when you were in the space with him, right? He has a lot, he knows a lot and he has a lot of experience. And I, there are people that, there are programs in the United States, but I think the commitment, there was a level, a very high level of, of commitment from him. This is super clear. Yeah, yeah. super clear. Yes, he is very passionate about his work and uh, he's very passionate in giving the knowledge to other people so that they can use it and uh, for their own benefits. He's not that kind of person that uh, this is mine and I won't give anybody anything. Uh, he's not that kind of person. He's like always giving and giving and uh, it's always mentioned by 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 his students that uh, you aren't you afraid that your students will take it and uh, um, use it as their own method? He says like, please, you are welcome. Take it mm -hmm. and make it work. Make it work for you. Make it your own method. Um, if you want, call me. Write me an email anything, I will be in touch with you and will help you to go through this because in these times, in contemporary times, we don't have a lot of support in arts. Right. So we have to support each other, especially now with this COVID. Um, that's, um, that's ridiculous how we have to survive in these times. Yeah. So we have to support each other. We have to share the tools, share the skills, and um, we hope that uh, this time will pass and we will be able to create, share, travel, and work together again. Well said. I'll let that be the last word. I mean, um, again, thank you. Uh, this is the International University Global Theater Experience, right? And it's I-U-G-T-E. And um, you, you guys are on the web, you, if, if you guys are 
people out there, if you're interested in knowing more about the organization, you can find more information. We will have it in the description box of the video. And, um, you know, you can contact uh, Veronica or you can contact me. I'll put you in touch with her. Um, in any way um, is good. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Well, thank well, you. Th thank you. Thank you. It was great to see you in, in person, live. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen you live since, you know, when, what it was, three, four years ago, huh? Yes, yes, it was uh, 2018, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, look, have a great evening and uh, we will be in touch, okay? Yeah, definitely. Let's keep in touch. All right. Have a nice evening too. David. All right. Take care of yourself. Bye. Bye. -bye.